Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan and welcome back to the Vast and Ominous Comic Vault. Today, trying to get back to some solo vaults. I haven't done this in a good long time, uh, just me sitting in front of a camera talking about a comic book I read. And years ago, I used to do the Daily Vault, and I really kind of miss doing that. I've been getting a lot of requests lately to talk about recently finished comic arcs and things that uh, I've, I have that I read years ago that I've never gotten around to talking about. And I've been doing a lot less lately with single issue reviews when I get my pull list, and I'd like to really start uh, talking about things when they finish, uh, but I also would like to do disparate, random, every now and again, single issue reviews again, and uh, that's what I'm going to be doing today. So I don't want to promise anything, I don't want to promise daily, but I'd like to get as close to that as humanly possible, and... Right now, we're working on a uh, five-day-a-week system for posting here on the channel, and I have a backlog of videos right now. So what I'm going to do is, whenever I make a vault like this by myself, uh, so not uh, so, so not lengthier discussion videos uh, with Eric or Dan um, or, uh, or or anybody else I happen to do a vault with, I'm going to uh, post these in addition to whatever comes up that day until I get caught up, and if you know this ends up being the only thing I've got for that day, uh, then that's that's what you'll get. But for right now, there'll be kind of additional content. So uh, anyway, feel free uh, to make requests for anything uh, that's come out recently or that you uh, know I, I have or uh, that I'd be interested in, in talking about uh, that you really want to see me review. Feel free to uh, make requests. Uh, again, I can't promise anything, uh, but I, I want to start doing more of these kind of kind of quick solo videos, uh, quick for me anyway. And uh, sometimes it'll be single issues sometimes it'll be uh, it'll it'll be trades and as always uh, with the vault especially when I'm on my own uh, this will be as much about uh, kind of relaying uh, an issue to you and uh, giving you some knowledge about it as it will be reviewing and of course I'll do both but I'm not gonna it's expect that anybody's actually looked at these when I talk about them and uh, these will be full-blown spoiler reviews so I uh, you can kind of enjoy it vicariously but uh, through through uh, my review but just remember of course that uh, if you don't actually read the thing then I uh, you 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 uh, it's, it's possible that your read would be different than mine and that you would have different opinions than I would so I uh, take of course everything uh, um, I say, as, as far as my own opinions, uh, with a grain of salt if you've not actually looked at this, but uh, I'll give you a, a, a bit of a synopsis and um, let you know what happens in some issues that uh, maybe you've never gotten a chance to take a look at. Today, I want to look at the first Star Trek comic ever published. This is from Gold Key, which was kind of the IDW of its day. Uh, Gold Key in the 60s was publishing uh, a lot of comics from licensed properties that were popular then, and so they had Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea comics, and they had uh, Green Hornet and uh, Twilight Zone and things like that. Uh, Star Trek is published in 1967, so of course uh, into the second season uh, of that show uh, is when this first issue comes out. And the uh, the folks working on it only had a, a few notes to work off of. So they knew character names, and they knew the basic premise of the show, uh, and they knew some of the trappings. But a lot of the terminology and even uh, kind of kind of some of the ideas, you know, what Star Trek is all about, are things that they, they're kind of lacking. And so the, these are really interesting to go back and look at because uh, they look a lot, they, they read a lot like older, like Golden Age pulps. Uh, you know, we're getting right into the Silver Age here in comics, and uh, they, they read like kind of kind of Golden Age, uh, a standard, almost generic even, uh, sci-fi adventure pulp comics, but through the familiar trappings of uh, Star Trek and characters that, that you that you may be familiar with. And so uh, they're really interesting to go back and take a look at. We're going to look at the first one today. Uh, part of the reason I'm doing this is because I started subscribing to the Eagle Moss Star Trek collection. And uh, so this is the first book in that line. And as you notice, this does not have Gold Key Star Trek stuff on it at all. It doesn't look anything like the... Uh, 
the cover that you just saw there on the screen. Uh, this is Countdown, which is the prequel comic for Star Trek 09, and I have reviewed that on Trexperts with Sarah. We did that years ago, uh, so we're not going to be talking about that today. But the Eagle Moss books, uh, at least for the first several, put one of the gold key issues at the back of each of these trades, and uh, I decided to go ahead and start um, collecting these because uh, it's everything. Uh, I'm going to have the... It's everything up to uh, recent IDW stuff, and I don't know how far it's going to go beyond that. Uh, there's a big diorama picture uh, that it's... I'll put that on the screen, that it uh, makes... Um, with the uh, with the spine, and uh, it's and it's really cool looking. Uh, you know, a bunch of Star Trek starships uh, in in space. And I don't know if that's going to continue on or if they're going to cap this off at some point and then you're just kind of on your own with everything IDW is publishing from now on. They're front-loading it with some semi-recent IDW stuff and they're even going to do some of the crossovers, I think, a little later in the year and it's so like Planet of the Apes and stuff. And so uh, one thing that I'm a little bit concerned about just for me personally is I don't know if I should still be buying any IDW Star Trek or if I should just wait because it's going to be redundant and I'm going to end up with it again. Uh, as some of you probably probably know I am a collector and a reader simultaneously and sometimes even more of a collector than a reader for certain things so I'm much more of a singles guy most of the time but I couldn't pass this up because I uh, it, it's it, the presentation is gorgeous uh, I thought it would look just really good in my library and uh, I, I showed these to my son and he was really excited about them and uh, I a part of the reason I'm getting this is so that Jason could read them so I so Jason promised me he would read these as we got them and uh, I know some of them aren't gonna be very good uh, uh, but it's going to be interesting uh, to, to have all of the Star Trek comics collected like this. And when I say all of them, I mean from all the different publishers. The uh, the DC stuff is here. The Marvel stuff is here. The... Uh the, the, the stuff from uh, from the UK is here, the old newspaper strips, and it's, I mean, not here what I have right now, but is going to be part of this collection. And it started a few months ago, so I'm late on it, but uh, just to give you some information about it, if you decide you're interested in it, uh, it's one of those things, Eagle Moss is the... Um, is the company that they do a lot of mail order stuff, and they put out the uh, the the Batmobilia collection. Uh, uh, is, is that what it's, is that what it's called, or is it the uh, the, the automobile, the Batman Automobilia collection? And it's a bunch of Batmobiles and other vehicles and cars uh, that are like little scale models, and uh, they're really cool. I considered getting into that at one point, and I decided it was just a little bit too steep uh, for for me with the other things that I'm getting, and I did and, and I didn't know where I would put them. I just didn't. Have have the space for them. So I elected to start collecting the Batman Pops instead, and that's partly why I'm doing that. But anyway, so uh, these are uh, 30 bucks a month for two. So they're 15 a piece, uh, but when you sign up, you get two a month, and there's no way to get less than that. So it is a $30 commitment, but you get two $15 hardcover trades. I think that's a real good, reasonable price, and uh, it takes a couple of years to get everything, unless they keep it going, and I don't know. I kind of don't think they're going to, but I but I don't know, and a part of me kind of hopes that they do, uh, because like I said, I'm not going to be, uh, then I don't have to keep collecting, uh, you know, the Star Trek comics and make it real redundant, so I don't know what I'm going to do with the stuff that I have already, now that I'm getting these, but anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Eagle Moss collection, so anyway, uh, one of the reasons it's really nice to have this is... It gives you some background information that you might not have otherwise had about this stuff. And so some of the stuff that I just told you about Gold Key, uh, I got from the little blurb here uh, before you get into the issue. So quick synopsis of the issue. Uh, like I said, this is the very first Star Trek comic ever made, and so uh, it is rough. It's a little, like I said, unsure of what it exactly it is. Uh, it gets that it's space opera. It, like, it, it feels like I'm reading a couple of guys trying to get their 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 heads around what exactly Star Trek is supposed to be. So uh, you're, you're, there, there's a little bit of John Carter on Mars in this. Uh, you can... You, you can really see where uh, what, like like the pulps and things that these guys in, in classic science fiction novels that, that these guys are familiar with and uh, they're trying to bring an exciting uh, space opera to um, to children. I, mean, I, I have to expect that um, these guys figured that mostly kids were going to be buying this and so uh, they, they try to they try to make it um, big and fun and epic before they try to make it about anything but they also uh, do attempt to get some science fiction ideas in there and I'll talk about that. Uh, but it 
isn't uh, at the end of the day, especially Star Trek, especially given what uh, Spock ends up doing at the end that is not just uh, completely unspockish, but would also be uh, the the biggest violation of the prime directive that you could uh, that you could possibly do. And so we'll talk about that. So brief synopsis. Uh, the enterprise, I, I gets these weird spores uh, mysteriously aboard it from space. And they end up transforming animals in sick bay into big, scary, crazy plant creatures. And one of the things that's kind of fun about this is it's the kind of stuff that you can't do on a TV budget. So these guys are really working within the medium that they have, and they know that that uh, you know money is no object. And so uh, one thing that this does that uh, a lot of Star Trek comics kind of uh, have difficulty with later on, uh, once Star Trek, of course, is a lot more solidified, is they're they they're so they're so talky that you wonder and Star Trek is a real talky thing don't get me wrong but they it, they won't use the visual medium to its greatest uh to its greatest extent, and you wonder, uh, you, you question whether or not the comic book is the best medium for it sometimes. And there's no question here that the, the, the comic book uh, or, or an animation or something, uh, you know, visual medium, is exactly where this should be. And it, it feels a little bit like an animated series episode, and of course this is a, a few years before that happens, and the, the original series is still on, uh, but it is very much like an animated series episode, especially in that there's there's uh, there's not really any character arcs for anybody. Uh, our characters don't really come alive. They're kind of genericified, uh, but th that happens for a different reason in the animated series. Because again, here these guys are just working with a few notes from like you know like part of a series bible or something uh, is what it sounds like. So anyway, uh, th so unrelated to finding out about the spores, the Enterprise comes upon a planet uh, and they just want to go investigate uh, and, and explore it because they're explorers, and it turns out that this planet is where those spores came from. And so they find all these crazy giant plant creatures, and one of them is this, uh, is this big tree thing and they keep calling it a plant tree, which is redundant because tree is kind of plant. And it ends up attacking and kidnapping Yeoman Ran. And we discover that these plant creatures are uh, self-aware and uh, maybe more than just sentient. And they uh, have put together this kind of society where there is uh, like this class system. And it's it's kind of it's kind of an interesting idea. There's no communication whatsoever, and it does look like it could all kind of be natural. But it's kind of curious because uh, they're hurting uh, a certain like like what what they seem to deem lesser plant creatures uh, and and even animal species. They're they're like they're like hurting them for food, uh, like we would herd cattle. And so it's so they seem to have uh, maybe a little bit of. Like, uh, like, like human instinct when it comes to organization, but it's curious that we never attempt to do any kind of communi communication with them, and we keep talking about them like they're just plants or just like dumb animal creatures. And uh, they, they seem to just reading this on the page, they, 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 they seem to uh, illustrate or, or uh, demonstrate some kind of intelligence to me. And so I wonder why we're not trying to communicate with them at all. And the, 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 uh, the idea seems to be that uh, like in every ecosystem, it's uh, eat or be eaten. It's uh, survival of the fittest, and um, so Yeoman Rand uh, is treated like uh, just uh, like I said, cattle, and she's given to uh, the she she's supposed to be given to the like uh, lesser of the plant creatures. So there's like there's like different levels of these plant creatures, uh, and some of them are uh, like like uh, at the top of the food chain, and then some of them and then some of them are more like cattle, and so they take certain kinds of food and they give that to the cattle, and then they eat the cattle. And so uh, it's it's a really uh, it's a really interesting idea, and uh, I love the art in this a lot. Uh, it's it's uh, it's really atmospheric. 
and uh, it's pretty detailed uh, for the day, and uh, I imagine these guys didn't get a ton of time to, to work on this. Uh, so, and, and like I said, it looks a lot like Golden Age uh, sci-fi pulps. So I could see a kid getting really kind of sucked into this alien world, and uh, it's just a really good escapism, and I, I, I like it a lot for that. Uh, but anyway, so... Um, the other idea that's here is uh, the basic notion of uh, humanity and what makes a man a man uh, versus, I guess, these plant creatures that aren't supposed to be um, to, to, to really have uh, any humanity in them. And uh, there's a kind of, for lack of a better word, red shirt, because they're not wearing red shirts and they all have um, these. It, it, it's, it's real kind of uh, almost you know, like cage era looking costumes. Like, it's not the costumes from the cage, but they're not uh, primary colors. They're they're the more uh, mono monochromatic, uh, like like uh, like grays and um, I guess everybody's just wearing gray in this. Uh, okay, on the ship it's it's uh, it's still green and uh, in in blue some, uh, but but they're they're more muted and and and, um, and understated. And then when they go down to the planet, they actually have uh, like planet side uh, suits where they have uh, gloves and backpacks and it kind of makes more sense you know what they're wearing when they beam down to this planet because they, they look like they're ready for for hiking and, and uh, uh, more ready if something were to attack them so anyway um, there's a guy who gets attacked by one of the plant creatures, and he gets transformed into the plant, because that's what these spores do. And they're really lucky, by the way, that those spores at the beginning didn't turn any of the people into plants. And uh, with the the last of his humanity left in him, uh, he ends up sacrificing himself to save the crew. And that's and, and then he transforms fully into this plant creature, and so it's, it's supposed to be kind of tragic. Uh, but beyond those two ideas, uh, there's not really a lot going on here except for just a uh, big uh, adventure fighting plant creatures and uh, trying to figure out how we're going to survive. So it's just a survival adventure. At the end, uh, Spock destroys, uh, on orders from Kirk, uh, destroys the plants that are uh, th that that are uh, entrapping Yeoman Ran, and that's maybe somewhat understandable because uh, it's it, it's it's to uh, protect a crew member, uh, its defense. But then, uh, because they've discovered that these spores, and I, like I wish there was some certainly some discussion about, um, and and again I'm saying this somewhat in with with hindsight knowing what Star Trek is supposed to be, but even. Uh, if, if I didn't, you, you have a you have a, a story that's saying that um, part of uh, what what makes us better than uh, plants and animals is that we care about each other and uh, that that by and large we have uh, regard for human life and we'll put that above anything else. So when you have that, it's kind of weird that we only care about human life and that we don't care about uh, about anything else. And so it seems like an almost anti-environmental message. Uh, and that's this is in the mid '60s, so that seems like a weird time for that. So even with historical perspective, I could see somebody kind of raising an eyebrow at this and being like, "Well, but like these plant creatures are just like doing what they do. They don't even realize probably that you're not part of their ecosystem, uh, or like maybe they do and they're and and they're you know trying to defend themselves. Like you didn't even try to do anything but destroy them. And so I wish there was a conversation about that. Uh, but then at the end, Spock. Uh, just obliterates the entire planet. I mean, it doesn't blow up the planet, but he obliterates all the life on the planet because they're emitting these spores that are going to go all out into the universe. They say universe. The terminology here uh, is different than it will be in Star Trek later, but also original series would kind of sometimes interchange quadrant and galaxy and stuff, too. So they've gone into a different galaxy. Uh, of course, if, if you know your Star Trek later on, uh, we, we, uh, we rarely... Uh, I leave our galaxy, and we haven't even explored all of it. So, uh, whenever we leave, whenever we leave our galaxy, it tends to be some kind of uh, entity that lets us do that, or another dimension, or something. But anyway, so uh, they go to another galaxy, and uh, they, uh, uh, Spock is worried about the spores getting out to the universe. And so, again, I kind of get that you're trying to protect other people on other 
planets, but there there has to be a, a, a better way, or at least discussion of another way, and obviously these guys are not yet familiar with the Prime Directive. Uh, it, it, it never comes up. There's no discussion about non-interference. There's no discussion about uh, regard for other alien life, and it seems like it's just uh, we care about us and our own uh, the end. And uh, it's hilarious, but it's kind of... Um, you get kind of an empty feeling when you finish this uh, this comic because you get to the end and it's just and we uh, and we destroyed it the end and the last panel you're left with is uh, the Enterprise causing carnage across this planet with this plant life they're just shooting laser beams because this is laser beams and setting trees on fire and that's what you're left with uh, it's kind of hilarious the other thing I wanted to talk about is the uh, terminology, and again, this is a thing that's, that, that's brought up in uh, the the uh, introduction to this comic, um, and, and I hope each of these has has an introduction. They talk a little bit about um, the the issue and any background they might have, because I'm sure there's not much information about this stuff and and the background, you know, lying around. But uh, the, the, it talks a little bit about how the terminology has changed. So it's a uh, teleportation chamber instead of transporter room. You know, teleportation instead of uh, instead of transporting, and um, the the, uh, the my favorite is instead of communicators we have radio TV signals and it's supposed to be real futuristic because you when when you uh, talk to someone on the ship you're talking to them through a view screen so it's radio because that's audio and it's TV because that's video that's a lot of fun. I think my favorite thing about looking at these uh, has got to be the, the the things they didn't know about Star Trek yet, and uh, how it's it's still like Star Trek is still trying to find itself, and uh, they're having to play catch up because they really uh, don't know what that is yet. And so, like I said, it's 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 really interesting to to look at what is basically a golden age uh, science fiction adventure story, but with Kirk and Spock and McCoy. But not exactly Kirk and Spock and McCoy. So anyway, uh, that's all I have to say about it. And uh, I'm going to maybe talk about some more Gold Key if there's any interest in it uh, as I get those. But uh, I'll do something else for you, uh, uh, hopefully tomorrow. Again, I don't want to promise anything, but uh, when I have time, I'm going to put these out uh, as, again, quick for me. I'm sure this is like a 20-minute video, but uh, but I will um, I will post these as often as I can. Uh, and just when I happen to read something on my own, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Sure appreciate it. This uh, concludes today's Comic Vault. Happy reading, everybody.